not only that you also have been india cultural ambassador in oman where you beautifully you know bring this india culture to touch across various community and the grow globe by your brilliant articulation a very good morning very good afternoon and very good evening to my audience across the world thank you so much for joining for our exciting episode today with this gorgeous and brilliant vasanta vaikund she is an award winning classical dancer in bharatnatyam she is an ex indian cultural ambassador in oman and her talks has touched millions of life throughout the world she is a national and stayed award your dancer for her brilliant performance on bharatnatyam you know vasanta you really need no introduction you have done everything so meticulously and so beautifully and it's such a honor for me to welcome you for my show success sutra with sangeeta welcome vasanta uh thank you sangeeta very much for making me part of this and i hope all the success of success sutra with sangeeta and uh, i really god bless you that it will take you to heights great heights and i'm very happy to to be here today thank you so much yes indeed in fact um, you know 13 most chosen celebrities across the country who's willing to come and share their thoughts i'm so glad you did accept the invitation so let us jump to the question directly you know after i circulated your poster many of the queries came back to me and then you know i kind of picked a few question from there I just wanted to understand, Vasanta. You're playing so many roles at one time, being a holistic life coach, a dancer, author, writer, and a great lecturer. Having your own documentary to running an online emotional support platform, which is the need of the hour today, and everything you do, you have been doing so gracefully and so successfully. What has been the secret behind this energy source? Huh. uh that's a bit uh, the, that's a bit a challenging question uh, i'll try my best to answer that i think the creative energy that flows when there are no blocks in your mind because i feel that uh, the blocks in the mind is what creates the hassle one should stay liberated and the child in me which is still alive makes me fall in love with innovative energy and it is always a nice experience to explore different talents instead of branding yourself i think i am not the brand i think my skills will speak for themselves and i thought to myself success is not your decision but happiness is so i made happiness the the process of my journey and not a destination and uh, one more thing is probably the challenging nature that i am into like i must say that uh, nothing came easy for me that way uh, i challenged myself all the time and i needed to uh, be a dancer and uh, when i wanted to be a dancer i couldn't because i was challenged by a natural medical issue that i had in my feet so i had to stop it so when i stopped it i i was quite sad but my parents were very kind enough to put me on to music and instrumental but then after 20 years i bounced back to dancing inspired by so many people especially sudha chandran and i thought to myself that if she can dance without a leg why can't i dance now and try and trust me till today i have not looked back at all i am still able to dance at least for an hour not if not every day at least two three times a week and i have composed many ballets and things like that but then my most uh, challenging time was when i had to manage my family and my career and my passion but having said all this i think uh, my miraculous exp- uh, exploration that happened in dance really taught me how to bounce back in life and passion it was my passion but passion but not an obsession because i always differentiate between the two 
because passion comes from the heart and obsession comes from the mind and obsession creates fear passion creates joy which will stay with you forever and i think being a holistic uh, lifestyle coach i am born i am born with that gift of being naturally spiritual that is so so beautifully said you know about passion and obsession i think nobody could have better articulated this other than you thank you so much on that note you know vasanta was so intelligent i've been ins- being totally thoroughly inspired by all your work and talks of the like i just wanted to understand you have also been the chapter chair person for the vehicles culture and heritage council not only that you also have been india cultural ambassador in oman where you beautifully you know bring this indian culture to touch across various community and the grow globe by your brilliant articulation since you have promoted indian culture all across the globe i would like to know what is your message on our cultural diversity and what can it bring to the globe Uh, thank you for your question uh, i can't call myself the ambassador cultural ambassador of india but i can easily say that yes i uh, i tried my best when i went to the gulf especially to muscat uh, there was absolutely nothing it was a barren land so some people took to socializing some people uh, took to complaining but i by god's grace i said let me bring the art and culture from india to this land why not why can't i do that yes uh, the culture of that country uh, was different but i must say that uh, that land gave me immense opportunity and the leisure and the easy life to explore my way of lifestyle which is full of culture and art so i brought all the artists from india i said if i am not able to perform here at least let me bring the artists from india to make them perform here so that it will be an awakening for this land as well and i think uh, i worked uh, really hard for it i used to go door to door selling tickets and explaining to them what this culture and art means and uh, i think uh, in about uh, 20 25 years of com- when i completed 25 years i had already done more than 100 more than 100 shows in oman and that way yes and uh, when uh, mr natwar singh came from delhi as a foreign minister he did mention that uh, you are the true cultural ambassador of india and i feel indeed very honored and the best part of uh, this whole culture and art is um you know uh, it's the diversity that we have in india diversity in everything diversity in language diversity in culture diversity in art diversity in philosophy but we all stay united in just one thing and that is compassion and kindness and i think i found that quite a bit in the area that i lived and i felt very happy about how i was able to utilize this diversity in a very united form form of art which i could spread it out there and also enhance my own culture Asanta you know i i really look up to everything you have done so far i want to understand one question have you really been in, so intelligent and so inspiring from the day one of your school or college life how did you like how do you have so much of knowledge in variety of topic how do you articulate it so well i know you run a group on spirituality which has been followed across the globe and i have seen you know those group the powerful message you bring on the spirituality how did you inculcate this habit was it from right from the childhood you know that miss intelligent miss gorgeous all packaged together no. <laughs> or did you did you develop it you know while you know on the on the go uh, no not at all sangeeta uh, i have to i do differ here because uh, when i was a kid in school i was branded as a dumb kid and uh, my family uh, actually uh, never thought that i would ever make it in any career that uh, you know whatever because i think i come from a community and a background where the academics are uh, considered as the ultimate in life so and when i was very bad in mathematics i was written off completely as a dumb child and i would never make it but 
I my because I was indulging more in art, uh, makeup, dressing up, glamour, and dancing and music. I used to sing endlessly the whole day, but I would never get tired. But if I was asked to study, I would. So I can't say that I I have. Uh, I mean, I gained all these gifts uh, from the Almighty. Um, I don't know at what level in my life, but uh, the the knowledge and the wisdom that uh, I share from our scriptures, I cannot take the ownership of it. It is somebody else's. It is the Almighty's. And I have become a simple, humble instrument in imparting this. And uh, I don't know what intelligence. I don't consider my, myself as very intelligent because I am too gullible and I can be taken for a ride by anyone. But I think what is what protects me is my protection from God. You know, I have always heard all the great people who millions of them follow. They always say that the more you grow, the more humble you become. And you are a true replica of that, Hasanta. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, with that note, my next question to you. I've known you that you, you know run this very famous Just Speak platform where personalities like Mohandas Pai, Bhaskar Rao, Mr. Mahesh Bhupati, all of them have come and shared their life journeys and stories. Can you share a little more insight with our audience uh, what Just Speak is planning to achieve and how can you create a difference in people's life? Yeah, absolutely, because when I thought of Just Speak uh, a year and a half ago, my idea was to have it offline. And I want that human interaction so that, you know, we are able to, you know, normally what we do is like we exchange uh, notes and messages on WhatsApp and, you know, different groups, uh, which we forget in a second. When we read, we feel, oh, wow. But then, you know, it's gone out of my head. But I wanted that human touch and discussing about different social issues. We try to put it under the carpet. That was my sole intention. And uh, unfortunately, because of this pandemic uh, situation, I shifted it to online, which is really not uh, what I really want to do. But I must thank all those people, great people, great personalities who accepted and came and shared their journey. And I really respect their trust in me. But Just Speak is going to take off once again offline once we are all set i can still do it online but i think uh, i i'm more comfortable uh, because i think people are zoomed out already in life i think why to you know give them another boring thing so i i am really waiting to have this social uh, discussions very strongly and debates because i am uh, i love debates i love exchange of opinions and who, who really knows it better than you, uh, than myself? You know, I've seen you talking to, you know, bringing so many lives uh, with such different touch. I have seen when you walk, you walk the talk. I've seen the influence and the inspirational aura you sort of percolate about yourself. You know, I kind of find you this, you know, this universal source where you actually a person who likes to give it out. You know, it was such a pouring heart giving so much of knowledge, so much of wisdom to all of us. You know, thank you on that note. And thank you, you, Sangeeta. <laughs> thank you indeed. Uh, to, uh, I mean, I, I don't know whether I deserve all this praise, but you yourself is so full of so many talents. And I think uh, one should have this diverse nature of uh, exploring because, you know, it's like, uh, uh, what do you call? I, I Like I said, I don't like to brand myself into one thing. And I, because I like to explore the talents that you have and take it as a challenge and remove the blocks in your mind. And like you yourself, for example, you are a CEO of a company and yet you are able to write poetry, you can dance, you can sing. I mean, you can do multiple things. And I think people, what happens in today's world is that if I'm a dancer, I brand myself as a dancer and I go with the belief that I have to be like this I have to dress up like this. I have to speak like this. And I should shun everything other than dance. Please, I request everybody to explore what you have from within, which will bring immense joy. Yeah, very, very well said, Vasanta. In fact, uh, we all get ourselves into this cocoon of boxes of typecasting or stereotype, you know, stereotyping what we are good at. But 
you know, there is so much of potential on each one of us really to go and challenge your status quo. And that's what I think people like you who brings to the table. And that's why I'd wanted to do this channel with all of you, you know, so that the message goes clearly. Now, my next question to you, Vasanta, I have heard you saying life is in your hand and you can achieve everything by changing your lifestyle. And I just wanted to know, and, you know, quite a few questions came to me during this, you know, poster circulation that I would like to know, my audience would like to know, how do you inculcate that belief in your daily practice? Uh, see, life is in your hands. Uh, yes and no. Because uh, the world occurrences, like I have just posted a couple of blogs on that, the world occurrences, like, for example, this pandemic is not in your hands. But how do I deal with this? How do I live with this? How do I react? Is entirely in my hands. And if I go on, you know, thinking, analyzing on these world occurrences, when I, mean, when I say that, I also mean the people's actions. You have no control over people's actions, but you have immense control over your reactions. So I think your, your knowledge, built-in knowledge, plus your acquired knowledge of reading and acquired knowledge of your experience in life is the greatest guru for you. And when, it's, when it stands as a guru, it helps you to understand what is exactly is in your hands and what is not. Every answer you bring to the table has so much of wisdom on it. So much of wisdom on it. In fact, just the way you articulate the action and reaction. I've never thought like that. You know, you have a control on your action, but how do you react? I think people, there is a very well, very, you know, famous saying, you know, how you should handle your success with humility and failure with grace. And that's what makes you who you are. No, because you, success is not in your hands at all. Right. It is a design. It comes from with a design and you are just falling into that design. So Absolutely. what is there for you to uh, be so proud of? There's nothing to be proud of, actually. <laughs> You know, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, I tell that Vasantha Vaikun is an inspiration to million. Look at the humbleness she is bringing in everything. She's giving it out to the universe and not really bragging of so much of achievement. That's what the true humility is all about. I uh, wanted to know one more uh, very interesting you know, thing, which I always wanted to ask you. Being an award-winning dancer, you have put India's name to the world. I know there has been so many documentary on your name, there are so many, you know, episodes you have kind of, so many lives you have changed. I would like to know, and it is always a one question I ask to all my, you know, all the people I've been interviewing, as the name denotes Success Sutra. I want to know, what has been Success Sutra for you? What is that formula of success? Can you please elaborate that to my audience? Um, I, I don't know if there's a one word to it, but I think the Success uh, Sutra in everybody's life should be absolutely your commitment and your focus. Because your focus and commitment will take you a long way. And uh, when I see in today's world, I mean, uh, when I'm observing, I find that people are very passionate about what they want to do and they're very excited. But uh, somewhere on the way, they lose that interest or they lose that commitment. And uh, I don't know, I can blame it on distractions. I can blame it on so many other things. But I think what is important is stay committed because the ups and downs are bound to happen in every field of your life and every stage of your life. But you can't throw it in the air what you decided for yourself. And the next sutra is please take responsibility of your actions. Don't try to put the blame on others. It is, again, you know, very, very valid inputs what you brought in, Vasanta. In fact, yes, you know, this is a part of life, part of journey. Staying focused, committed, and, you know, staying true, I think, makes the difference. With that question, you know, I'm coming to the rapid fire round. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. It's going to be all questions which comes in my mind. Oh, and I I'm wonder sure what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you what... Uh, okay, what's your favorite TV show? 
or oh, tv show meaning entertainment yes or it can be it can be entertainment it can be movie it can be news channel it can be musical album whatever tv show whatever you like or maybe yeah, you can but... say what is the current context because covid is very at the peak a lot of us watching news channel right what is your favorite host you know anchor news anchor uh, i i my of course my i am very partial uh, and i'm sorry to be so i think my favorite is of course arnav goswami oh. uh, i like him for his guts i like his honesty and uh, i like the way he presents because people may think he's a drama king but i think he's doing his job very well as a tv anchor and you take it or leave it <laughs> yeah it's always that to you know arnav is my favorite too in fact i hope arnav get to see it some day soon but uh, yeah. <laughs> the way he is able to you know put the message across whatever yes. dramatized way that doesn't matter the message comes across very strongly and people are moved by the channel whoever says what the moment you become successful people will talk on your back but that's people okay. will talk yeah that's na- that's natural yeah that, and the more people talk on your back means the more better actual right direction you are going ahead so <laughs> yes. i always say you know when people come to me you know they are saying so so i said wow i am on the right direction let people talk yes. whatever shit they want i know i am achieving my dream okay now let me sort of ask you a little tricky one now <laughs> oh my now, god <laughs> i'll give you five names because we talked about news anchor let me give you five names and you have to tell me one particular word that comes to your mind about these names so i'll tell you a particular person you have to articulate you know what comes to your mind at the first let's start i try i try my best <laughs> okay let's start with arnav goswami only arnav goswami uh honesty shirin bhan uh i think she is a woman of substance okay uh, rajdeep sardeshai manipulative <laughs> <laughs> barkhadat arrogant Oh wow mini menon <laughs> uh mini menon is an icon yeah she's you, know, you are good. amazing wasn't the how quickly you can think and put the right word it just <laughs> cannot be better than that okay uh, on that note uh, maybe the books on my back let me ask you who's your favorite author uh see i'm not a great uh, reader of uh, novel fictions uh, because that doesn't interest me at all i i read more on uh, you know my own philosophy and spiritual books but then having said that my favorite author has always been leon uris because i like historical fictions because i like the way he had explained the exodus and he wrote about this book hajj you know i like the historical locations and the fiction that's woven around those historical facts so he's i can say that yeah. you know one thing i have noticed whoever i have interviewed so far all the people who have really achieved something there is a, some real taste of history and culture imbibed in them i think because of the source you want to seek source of knowledge that's what becomes yeah. a replica in yourself you know thank yes. you thank you on that note uh, wasn't the, you watch uh, movies right yeah kind of yeah <laughs> what is your favorite most movie you have watched in the recent time or maybe from the past um uh, oh, i i really <laughs> i really am i'm lost because i liked uh, quite a few movies uh, i still uh, i still find this movie kabhi kabhi the uh, old one right you know, right quite uh, quite touching yeah and it was very difficult there are so many genre of so many so amazing many genre, yeah. it's so difficult to figure <laughs> it out now that we are talking about movie let me ask you who's a favorite actor amitabh bachchan oh, legend he is a legend yes, and a legend. yeah yeah uh, who is the favorite actress uh there are many but i think uh, in the modern times i like uh, i mean modern times i like uh, madhuri dixit mm-hmm. i can't say she's the modern time but she's she's good. always remain forever modern for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. from the old times i like wahida rehman uh huh great because you're talking about and of Indian. course the the evergreen vijanti mala oh respect you know i just only have the love and respect on this names yeah. absolutely they brought they, they've given us such wonderful movies seriously which, yes you know okay since you're talking about uh, movies let me ask you one maybe not really right for rapid fire but let me ask you if i want you to define indian cinema in three words 
Yeah, what one is the... color. Uh-huh. Color. And uh, one is uh, drama, of course. They, they over-dramatize so many <laughs> things. And then I would say uh, fake perfection. Well, as I see the movies today, I find them, you know, like uh, those uh, men, the heroes and the heroines are so perfect to the T. I mean, their physical presence, uh, it's almost fake. <laughs> I can imagine. It's so well said. It's very colorful, very dramatized. And, you know, try to overdo things. So it comes across to be, you know, isn't it like little fake? Very, very, yeah. very well articulated. On I that like note, it little imperfect. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I know. In fact, uh, with this imperfection, I had to share a story right now. I know when I was growing up, I have this little uh, teeth, which is not aligned, right? And a lot of people came to me saying that, why don't you align your teeth? I said, you know, why have to be so perfect in everything? Exactly. Have the imperfection. <laughs> and that's what is your aura, right? You know, it's perfection. No, you, look, uh, you look beautiful. That's what makes you look beautiful. And that's my personality. God that. has given me. Let me have it with that way. I don't want yeah. to achieve something by doing everything perfect. Yeah, yeah. Very, very well said. On that note, thanks, Vasanta. On that note, my, uh, you know, last two questions towards the rapid fire round. What has been your favorite form of dance? I know you're a uh, Bharatanatyam dancer, but yeah. apart from Bharatanatyam. <laughs> apart from Bharatanatyam, uh, I like uh, Odyssey. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know Indian dance, I think, brings such very rich culture and history, you know. Yes. Uh, and what is has been your best moment in life so far? Oh, my God. <laughs> there are many. Uh, but I would still say, talk about the passion that's my dance. I think when I bounced back uh, in my career, dance, I can't say career, but I just bounced back to dancing. Uh, the first stage performance that I gave in Chennai was very soul touching and a great moment because the, that one particular dance, the first time I danced after 20 years was, uh, you know, considered as one of the best that most critics have seen in Chennai. And it came, they wrote in the papers and that's how I, my career took off. You know, ladies and gentlemen, how can you say somebody of, you know, somebody so versatile and so talented, you know, at the beginning, she hit the dance floor, you know, and then put the entire nation at a, you know, stake saying, wow. And you have so many, so many feathers in your personality. I think I just can't stop asking so many questions. <laughs> you know, I, I have now quick thing, you know, I just, uh, you know, my last uh, episode, which I kind of say it a one word message or strong message or one word answer. I know it cannot be articulated in one word, but you know I would like you to answer something very briefly. Okay, um, if you wake up like as Elon Musk tomorrow, what is that oh. one thing you would like to change? I think I would like to move to Mars <laughs> right away. <laughs> That's a right very away. very good one. That's a very very good one. Okay, what is the easiest way to make you smile for the admirer you have in this channel? Uh, they would love to know. What is the easiest way to make you smile? Children. Oh, I know. Their smile, I think, the best thing in the world. Yes, that's the best thing. Yeah, and what is the easiest way to really make you angry or piss you off? Lies and f- being fake. Right. Yeah, just be true and that's all matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a little personal question. What are the things you have been very obsessed about? Uh, But you know, actually, Sangeeta, I have no obsessions. (laughs) Because Uh I'm a very easy person and I just go with the flow. I have zero obsession about anything. I'm fine. Oh my God, (laughs) this is something, you know, saintly, divinely. I, I no, think, but that's know, why I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's really, and is it been there like that from very beginning? or Yes, sort of... from my childhood, I've been like that. I think my parents have never been able to control me by saying that, oh, I'll not uh, send you here, I'll not send you there, because <laughs> it didn't matter to me. It's okay, fine. Wow, you know, your true <laughs> replica of, you know, genuinity with humbleness with everything. I am running out of adjective, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, One habit uh, you would like to avoid? I know you're not obsessed, but one habit you want to avoid today? Uh, uh, Sometimes I feel that I go extra mile uh, 
to be nice, very nice. That's my nature. But uh, I could avoid it at times, I feel. Yeah. I know. I think sometimes when you're too nice to people, at times, you know, people do take, you know, unnecessary favor. Un- un- it's not required always. I think, yeah. I've seen yeah. whatever people have come back to you, even I myself, whenever I was in trouble, I reached out to you. I think you're the first person who opened up completely, you know, trying to help. I think that nature sort of really attracts, makes you a magnetic personality. Yeah. With that note, uh, you know, my, my last question, uh, maybe uh, for, this, for this episode today, uh, what is that one thing you do before going to the bed? The reason I'm asking the question, because I have heard your Last few hours, a few minutes before going to bed and first few minutes after getting up are the most critical formula yeah. to drive you to success. So I want my audience to really get the knowledge. What, because you have been so successful throughout, what has been the you know, one thing you do before going to bed or maybe one thing you do after getting up? Uh, I think the one thing uh, one should, I mean, which I do uh, before I retire to bed, is uh, probably I introspect uh, uh, for two minutes, the, my full day's activity, and I, I figure out uh, if there's anything productive that I've done. If I have contributed anything to others, I check on that. And uh, the actually before falling asleep, all I do is just pray and chant, and I fall asleep. And uh, when I wake up, I... I sort of look out from my window and uh, see the sunshine and I, I take the inspiration from there saying that the sun never, sun never stops rising or the earth never stops moving for your benefit. I think as a human being, you should also be a giving person and be aware of your environment, be aware of your surroundings and try not to hurt people, but be of service to them. This is so beautifully, you know, articulated. Be of service, you know, be the sunshine of some other life. Be you and be genuine. And that's all we forget while making a living, we forget to have our own life. While making a career, we forget to pull people up. While making a presence, we forget to get together. You know, life is way too short. Just by the bling, your chapter or episode of life is gone. Actually, the the strange part is that uh, the modern world has changed. And uh, because of the social media and stuff, I think people have become more self-absorbed and uh, more more self-centered. So what is the reflection of that is like, each one of each one of them are trying to are waiting for your train to crash whether i am taking up my journey or not but i'm waiting for someone else's train to crash which is the attitude which is the mindset that i'm trying my best to change in people in a very small way absolutely you know i think each one of us if can take a oath that today one day let me do one good thing which will yes. influence one people, which will be cause of one smile, which will fill one stomach. Trust me, India as a country will be a country people will look up to. You know, it is just, we have so much of potential in this country. Only missing link, I see the kindness. There are few people are doing and trying to make it through. In this COVID crisis, we need you. We need all of you. Just try influencing that one smile, that one stomach, that one life. And you know, the kind of abundance you will see that will be humongous. On that note, you know, I, I really don't feel like closing the chat because I'm kind of climbing to the end of this chat, but would like to, you know, really thank you and our heartful gratitude from the Success Sutra team to accept the invitation and be a part of this journey. And before I end the show, you know, of course, I'll have a one what to tell to the world, you know, like a Miss World or Miss Universe. I'll come back to that, that one note from you. But before uh, we can wrap up the episode, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would love to announce that next three, four episodes, we have some amazing personality coming in. India's one of the top producers from Bollywood who has brought a lot of award in the country. One of the leading doctors that people look up to and can come live and ask questions. I invited him because of this current corona crisis. I just thought it would be helpful for people to know. We have 
you know, a biggest ever musical band, brand band in India, you know, one of the anchor from the, the co-founder of that. We also have a very famous actor. Stay tuned. I'm not going to share the name. It will all come on the way. But on that note, before we wrap this episode with this gorgeous, talented, brilliant and beautiful Vasanta, one message you want to give it out to the world, which you think will impact. It can be a message about today's current situation. It can be a message what you believed in that like one, you know, the anchor message you want to put it out to the world. What would that be? Uh, I think I would say that please stop being negative and uh, don't show your negative reactions. We all know what the world is uh, going through right now. And uh, this is not a new thing. Every once in 100 years, you do go through this pandemic situation. But we'll all pull through this. And life and death, when I talk like this, then people say that, oh, there are so many people who are dying. So what's your answer to that? But life and death is not in your hands. And life and death is an occurrence that need not have COVID for it. It happens anyways. So I think let's pray that not too many people we lose but we are able to protect everybody. And for that, you have to stay positive. I will not even say love, but I would use the word be positive. Yeah, absolutely, Vasanta. The Everything starts from your attitude and the positive attitude that you carry can turn every negative incident of your life into positive abundance. And with that note, I would like to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. And thank, thank you, Vasanta, for coming in. He's been a thoroughly, he's been, I've been a, one of the most one, wonderful episode I had with you. Thanks for sharing your thank knowledge you. and wisdom. And uh, hopefully we'll do more shows together in soon. Thank yeah, you. sure, sure. And thank you so much. Uh, I feel very honored to be part of your uh, show. And then we'll, I will be extending my continued support to you. Thank you. Thank you so much.